Hey guys, today I am going to talk about why game stores are such horrendous things to open in today's current economical climate. Game stores, I mean, it used to be that you could just print money, man. You buy these cards at distribution cost and you can just sell them and sell them and sell them. It's no longer that easy. In fact, it is very, very hard now to make money from the distributor. Everything is so optimal, optimized, that you got Amazon dumping. Amazon Prime Day is pretty close. I think it's in a week or two now. And you know it's, it, they're going to dump. They're going to dump Magic Product. Maybe they dump Disney Locana. It seems like they have a lot of Disney Locana right now. But the one reason that you would open a game store is to have a distribution contract. I still have one. And... It sucks. Man, it sucks. You ain't getting uh, very much discount on anything anymore compared to what people do online. And there are many, many distribution companies, sports and more, that pretend that or do have a local game store. Uh, Dave and Adams would be another one. I can name a ton of them. And they basically just sell at whatever the cost is. They want to do economies of scale. So to them, it is even better for them. They, they are willing to lose money just to get the customer, the lifetime value of the customer because maybe then the customer buys something that is more expensive. That's the Dave and Adams model. That's how they hook me. You know, that's how they hook me. And when you talk about distribution contracts, that is... Again, one of the only reasons you would necessarily want to have a store. Many distribution contracts, they need you to have a store at least some part of the year. Uh, when we sign our contract, I've always had at least one partner up to seven partners at one time. They have a minimal spend. At, initially, it was 5000 Now, it's 6250 Luckily for me, I have a friend who's utterly insane, and he owns a company that's worth north of $100 million. Uh, he ordered, I think, $72,000 of Lord of the Rings, and he ordered something like $28,000 of Fallout. So just that one dude, one partner I have, we honor our distribution contract, which is now upwards of $75,000 a year, minimal order. Now, you can order as much as you want, and there are other incentives. There are little brackets, right? If you order above this, then you get like a discount, or you have access to special items first. A lot of places have reward systems, which are, <laughs> I mean, I look at the prices of this stuff, and then I look at my distribution sheet, and it's almost the same. I I'm not kidding you. Like, there's no value. Hmm, how can I say it? There's not much that you can do to separate yourself with you're talking about a fungible item the item is the same for everybody and that is why i think a lot of people are bankrupting um simply put they just don't have the money the capital rent is also much higher i went with my partner to go check out the local mall when it was 2017 2018 i'm just going to i don't think i wonder any day it was $1.50 a square foot. During the pandemic, it was like $1 a square foot. And then out, out of the pandemic, they wanted to make up the money they lost. And now it's $2.25 a square foot. And you might be like, oh, that doesn't sound like a lot until, yeah, the square foot includes your front of house, but also your storage. The place that we previously rented was 1200 front of house. With an additional 600 storage, so that's 1800. Yeah, it makes a big difference when you go from 150 to 225 or 250, right? It, it's a lot because it's per month and it's a longer term lease now. So rent has gone up. Rent has gone up. Your margins have gone down. This is not a good combination, guys. This is a very, mm, very bad combination. And just, you know, it's just such a bad business model nowadays. 
the business model was perfectly fine. Like, I don't want to say it was a great business model, but it was an understandable business model when you buy a box for 80 and you can sell it for 100 because the lowest price online is 110 with shipping. That business model will work, but now you got competitors. Now, now you're being forced to buy 94 and you can't sell 100 anymore because you're not going to make money. So now you have to sell 110. And oh, Magic, by the way, the booster packs, this is a mess, right? Play boosters, draft boosters. It's just, well, what is this? Set boosters. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, just too many variants of all the things that they have. I mean, it just, like, what's going on here? So number one, rent is very high. Number two, your competition is very, very aggressive online. And number three, probably the most likely reason a lot of these game stores have gone belly up. Um, I always hear like, like local game, support your local game store, spo support your local game store. That's just not where people are playing games anymore. They go to each other's homes. They can go to a convention, for instance, like you, you go to a collector con, a TCG con, which is now gone. You can go to a card show. There are a lot. The, the trend has been towards more collections, collectors, even in Magic, right? You got the one-on-one -on -one ring of the Post Malone. The trend has been less players and more collectors. And even if the players are players, they're not drafting. They're not opening boxes. They're just buying a single card for their EDH stack. Or if they buy a new EDH stack, they make a new 100. And... That's a tough business model, guys. We, I mean, there's a there's a game that my girlfriend really likes. We're collecting it now, Weiss. I don't think anyone plays this game. <laughs> like, you know, I watch, I go to YouTube. There's no YouTube channels teaching me how to play the game or even like that much video game footage. And there's barely any YouTube channel. Like, it reminds me a lot of Meta Zoo, where like there's not that much content out there. And like, how can that be if this is a real game? And there's a fifty thousand dollar prize. How come no one's like doing a deck tech or something like that? Like why, why are not not more deck techs? Because I guess no one's playing the game. And on YouTube, the content isn't really deck themed. There's just people playing the game on the commander. It's a very different place um, since you know I went to law school where I had a great community out there where all you did was play the game. You didn't make no videos about the game. I didn't I, even at that time I didn't, my new law student account. And most I just open boxes. But you spend most of your time just playing the game in your local game store. I used to shoot at my local game store. But now it's like, well, nah. Nah, we good. We good. So just the attitude of the customers have really changed from the mindset of playing the game to collecting the game. Pokemon being the number one you know, collectible game. Magic is not that far behind with all the different variants and alternative arts. And it's obvious to me, serialized numbers, which Pokemon doesn't have yet. But it's coming probably down the next 5, 10 years. Why I don't see why they would not. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Bye, guys.